everyone. Hey, how you doing, everyone? I know you guys have known us from different many um, many different things on Facebook, doing workouts, our marriage, many different topics we've discussed and things that I've done. But um, this video will be about how we met. Um, it's many people that have been asking how did we initially meet since I was in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and he, my husband, was in Suriname. So we're going to elaborate a little bit about how we met and our story. So how we met? I am going to say how we met. I mean, who and after who? He sent me an inbox. Um, I used to, well, I still do. I, I design clothes. 15. And um, since I design clothes and people would send me requests, I would just always accept them because I'm thinking, you know, it might be, you know, for business. Most likely, that's the only thing I would do is business. Because on my Facebook profile, I always had that I was in a relationship even though I wasn't. Just to kind of keep people at bay, men at bay. Um, however, he sent me a message, sent me a friend request, and I accepted it. And some time went by, and he started most likely sending me little notes here and there in my inbox and wanting to talk. We did start having regular conversation. You know, he, we would talk for sometimes, some time, a couple of hours. Um, and then that was it. I had no interest in him whatsoever. Really? No, I had no interest in him whatsoever. Um, but, I'm a friendly person, I go in person, and as long as you don't offend me, we can be friends. And we kind of stopped not being friends, but I kind of put him on do not disturb one day. For two years. Two years. Because he called me his babe. She was already my baby in my mind. That was in his mind, yeah. but in my mind, that came over as disrespectful, like, who are you to call me your baby? Babe, it's, it's a so word, he was right? on mute for two years. Um, what ended up happening is I had to travel to Suriname for my sister's birthday party, and that was going to happen January 7th of 2017. And um, since I'm an avid gym goer, my mom had advised me to not basically get on my aunt's nerve and ask her to take me here and there, basically find a ride. Since I know he was an officer in Suriname, Still. I had to um, kind of unmute him to protect and, serve, huh? and ask him to find me a gym that had certain things in it as far as like, you know, cycling bike, things of that nature, a nice gym. And also, um, what did I ask you? A driver, mm -hmm. a reliable a and trustworthy cab driver. You know, that's all I asked him to do. And um, he listened to me and he was very nice about it and said he would make sure he puts that in order. And we kept it at that. Um, I didn't give him a definite date with the day I was coming until it was close to the time. So my traveling date that I was supposed to be in Suriname was December 27th yeah. of 2016. I got into Suriname and next thing I know, the next morning, I had a text on my messenger because I never gave him my phone number. But um, tell them what happened phone? when you saw that I had you had a missed call. Ooh, I'm a police officer back home, you know, and I thought if she wanted a cab driver. So let me start like this: we were texting since 2015. I saw this beautiful lady. I'm the very lucky man to have her, even when I can say it myself, you know, and uh, I went
watch all her pictures, profile pictures, and I saw she was from Suriname. I mean, she was born in Suriname and but live in the U.S. But another not a U.S. thing changed my mind. To be honest, you know, um, when I started looking her picture, I was gone. You know, beautiful lady, good heart. How did you know, know I have a good heart? I was talking with you, right? But every you don't day. know that. Calling her every day when I get to work, every day. The minute I get to work, my police work, they're forgotten. You know, talking with this beautiful lady. So, real death thing, and I would start calling her baby. And she reject me. I said, I'm still going to call her baby. You know? We were texting, we were calling, and then we left it. We left it for two years. I said, maybe I'm not the lucky guy. 2015, let's just leave it, you know? And then 2016, I didn't want to believe it. I saw a, a missed call from the lady that I was crazy about. And I was so happy. I was gone and I called her the same minute I saw the missed call, you know, but she wasn't picking up. But I sent her a text and then she called and she picked up, telling me that she's coming in December and that she needed a cab driver. So I made up my mind. I said, I think I'm gonna be the cab driver to take her everywhere, to protect her and to surf Every minute, I'm going to be as a driver, but I'm a police officer. I took a month off from work, and guess what? When did we meet? December 28th, right? Was it? Yes. Um, no, it wasn't the 28th, um, because she texted me on the 27th. Mm -hmm. He texted me on the 27th, and when I saw the text, the text met, said, um, are you in Suriname yet? And of course, I was like, oh, why is he already harassing me? Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't respond. Um, I responded on the 29th of December because I needed a ride. Um, I had to meet my family at a place called the park. And at that time, around the holidays in Suriname, you have you can't really get get a cab. Like the cabs are shut down due to the New Year's coming in, mm -hmm. so you you have no way of getting to your destination unless you have your own vehicle. The worst thing, no gas stations are open. We found that out. I found that out later the hard way. So um, <laughs> so when. I needed him on the 29th. I called him. I said, yes, you know, I'm in Suriname. You know, um, he asked me, you know, where was I located? Where was I staying? And my response to him, he said he wanted to come see me. And my first response to him was, did you get me a gift for Christmas? And he said, are you serious? And I said, yes, I'm serious. All right, and what did I want? And I, I, he asked me what did I want. Your favorite soda. I wanted sodas. Like they have like these slamming sodas called Fernandez, and it's like the green one. I wanted ice cream, cookies. Yeah, with to be honest, uh, I didn't have money on me that day. So I called a Chinese friend. No, I was broke. I called a Chinese <laughs> friend that have a store. Like, hey, I'm coming today because I want to take some things. <laughs> to bring for a beautiful lady. You gotta help me, help a nigga, uh, help a man out. You know, so he called me, um, he said, all right, come over, I'll give you those things. So I, I got those things, I was so happy. And I went to the address where she was living with her aunt. And when I came, I arrived. I couldn't believe what I see. What I saw in the picture, that's what I saw. That's what I saw also that day. So, since I had to go to the party, 
he made it happen. He came and picked me up and we started. Okay. You yeah, my better life. My was I. You were. And uh, I forgot. The minute I came, right? I uh, I was in the address that you you sent me. Beautiful lady. Yeah. Okay, so he came. He came. You, he came with like the whole army. He was in uniform. And he came, um, you know, am I supposed to say you came with a police car? No, was it with a police car? Yes, because you had your co-workers with you and a military person, you had everybody in the truck. No, that was a, that was a, um, another day. The no, day that I, was the day you brought me the sodas. No, I was off, I was off. When you brought me the sodas? Yeah. My memory is gone. Okay, but anyway, so since I had to go to the party, he made it happen. He came and picked me up, and we started going to the place called the Park. Yeah, it was December. What was it? Twenty ninth or thirty. Twenty nine. Yeah, I came to pick her up, and uh, we went together. I was showing off, you know, in the city, showing off like she was already my wife. And all my colleagues was looking at me like, ooh, who's that fine looking lady? I said, it's my girlfriend. You know, I was not aware. I, I was not aware you know? he was telling them that. But because to me, he was nothing but my driver. Yeah, but I was already in love. You know, I was already in love with her. Mm -hmm. Um, well, definitely, I wasn't in love with him. I know. <laughs> But I did my best. Um, I was still kind of waiting to see if, you know, who was going to be our driver. I just thought that was just something he was doing temporarily until after the holidays for the driver that he scheduled to pick me up would pick me up or pick us up because it was also for my sister that I was waiting for her to um, come into Suriname for her birthday. Um... No one ever came to pick me up. Um, what he did, he basically took me everywhere I had to go. He would come in the morning, take me to the gym, and that's my son saying bye. Um, he would take me to the gym, drop me off. I usually would spend about two hours in the gym, so he would drop me off, come back, pick me up, take me back to my aunt's house, mm -hmm. drop me off. And then, you know, whenever I needed to go somewhere, he would be there waiting hand and foot. Um, I still didn't realize that this man had a crush on me. Mm -hmm. I had a crush on so, me. he was busy trying to hook my sister up with people, with guys, trying to do some type of love connection match. So, I recall asking him, like, why are you hooking my sister up? Like, why don't you hook me up with someone? And he's like, I have somebody for you. I'm going to let you know when I leave before I go back to the States. And I'm like, okay, no problem. You know, and I mean, I thought he meant that. And um, I recall there was another gentleman in Suriname that was kind of interested in talking to me. <laughs> well, that but he was... Ugly guy. <laughs> he was basically a show up yeah, because show off in the gym. You know, he went to the gym. He was big and buff and muscular. I mean, that type of stuff doesn't attract me. Um, because in in my past, I've worked in a prison. You know, I was an officer um, in a prison here, and I've seen all that. Um, that doesn't amuse me at all. Um, somebody's heart does. You know, um, and that's all what I always stay through to, you know, my heart, my feelings, and how someone feels about me. Um, but, you know, my, sister's, my sister came, we got her, he would take us back and forth, you know, he was still doing the regular routine. Every minute, every day. Then there was a party. Remember our first dance? Yeah, at the, um, There was a party, park. my, 
No, you didn't ask oh, me no. the park, oh, remember? Oh, oh, what's his name? Leon was there. So I thought there was a guy there, you know. But he's part of a family. A guy, but that's a little man, like, uh, this guy is dancing with, with her. But he was jealous because the never, guy had a yeah. whole bunch of gold on, like, this guy is just full of gold. She didn't know, you know that um, I was already in love with her, so. But he the didn't know dancing. that the guy, um, mm -hmm. it's basically his family, he, you know, he is bisexual and very outgoing person, sweet yeah. personality, but he just didn't know that. But you he know, had so a lot he, of gold, you know, I think maybe that's attractive, so a man loves gold. He was gold full of gold, man. full of like 22 like, karat oh, gold. I lost her tonight, <laughs> you know, but how he said bisexual or something. The minute I hear that, I was so happy. He's oh, he, he was happy yeah. to hear, you know, oh, yeah, he's bisexual. So. I mean, yeah, I was lucky that day also. So, um, we, um, tell them about you not having gas in the car. That was December, right? Now, mind you, he came and picked me up. Now, you know how they say the first impression is your, could be your last impression? So, he picked me up on the car in a car that was on E. The gas tank was literally on E. I didn't have money. I'm, I'm being honest, that day, he had already all seen. the gas stations were closed. ATM was not working. You the, know. Yeah, December the, in all my The country, ATM Syria, wasn't working. You know. The gas stations were closed and he was riding on E to the place. And well, we couldn't even find a place in the beginning. I prayed to the Lord and he brought Then I asked him, I said, okay, well, you know, um, if we get stuck, I mean, you guys have AAA, right? You know, like over here we have AAA, you just call, uh -huh. they come tow the car or bring oh, some yeah, gas. Yeah, phone call, but so, but nobody brings you gas. So I am definitely not comfortable. Like, I don't know if we're going to get stuck and how do we move forward from there. But by the grace of God, we made it there, and we made it back. He oh. dropped me off at my aunt, but now I was worried that he would be stuck somewhere. Which... I, I don't have a problem if I had to sleep one day in the car. The best thing is I brought her where she needs to go, and I made my day. See, that's how I'm thinking. So, um, that was definitely a challenge. But, you know, my aunt told me when you meet a person the first time, whatever they do, they're going to continue doing that. And I did find that out because, I mean, here it's a little different. But in Serena, I don't care if he has some money in his pocket. He will ride the car on E. Who? You. <laughs> he won't put gas in the car. He could have a, a pocket of money. The car. He's not putting gas in the car. Until he see the light is on and he's driven some. You know, that's what he did. I think he's changing a little now. Um, 